In electronics, the schematic is a drawing that represents an electronic circuit and is usually used to convey designs and ideas. So knowing how to read one is crucial if you'd like to share your design with fellow electronic enthusiasts or if you'd like to use a circuit that was already designed by someone else. Now if you've gone through any of our stamps and class text, you've probably come across various schematics and wiring diagrams showing you how to wire your circuit so you can successfully run your PBASIC programs. Up until now, you may have relied solely on the wiring diagram or the picture that shows you exactly which breadboard sockets to plug your various components into. Now in real life, these wiring diagrams probably won't be available to you, so you'll need to learn how to read the schematic instead. So today, we're going to get you up to speed on how to read schematics and how to wire circuits from them on a breadboard. The first step in reading a schematic is to know what parts you're looking at. Now every electronic component is represented by a particular symbol, and you'll have to know what these symbols are in order to know what you should add to your circuit. So let's take a look at some common electrical components and the symbols used to represent them in schematics. The How to Wire Circuits from Schematics documentation on the Stamps in Class Mini Projects page provides a table of many commonly found electronic components and their schematic symbols. You can use this as a reference as we go through the next examples. Now that we've had an overview of some common electronic components and symbols, let's take a look at how to wire some example schematics on a breadboard. Now, if you don't know how a breadboard works, or if you've never worked with one before, Parallax conveniently has another video entitled The Basics of Breadboarding, available on youtube.com slash parallaxinc. Now, if you've already seen this video, or if you just know how a breadboard works, let's continue. Let's start small with a simple LED circuit. Included in the schematic is a 9 volt battery, 470 ohm resistor, and an LED. Now how would we wire this on a breadboard? Just take each connection one step at a time. Here we have a 9 volt battery holder, and this red wire represents the positive terminal, and the black wire represents the negative terminal. So let's just start with the positive terminal of the battery. In the schematic, it's connected to one end of the 470 ohm resistor, so let's do that. The other end of the resistor is then connected to the positive terminal of the LED. Then the negative terminal of the LED is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Now, when you plug in the battery, the light should come on. Let's move on to something a bit more complicated and add a push button to control when the LED will come on. Again, we have our 9 volt battery, but instead of the positive terminal being connected to the resistor, we have it connected to a push button. Now, no power will be provided to the LED unless the push button is pressed. So again, let's take a look at how this will be wired on a breadboard. Just like before, let's take each connection one step at a time. So if we begin with the positive terminal of the battery, we see that it's connected to one end of the push button. Now let's stop here and talk about the push button for a minute. You may notice that there are four terminals on the push button, but only two shown in the schematic. That's because these two terminals here and these on the other side are electrically connected. The push buttons don't have polarity, so it doesn't matter which two terminals you choose. The next piece of our schematic connects one end of the resistor to the other lead of the push button, like so. Then the other end of the resistor connects to the positive lead of the LED, and the negative lead of the LED connects to the negative terminal of the battery. Now when we connect power, the LED should be off, but when we press the button, the light should come on. And now you're an expert on reading schematics, right? No, probably not. But really, the only way to get better is through practice. So take what you've learned here, and the next time you come across an activity that has both a schematic and a wiring diagram, challenge yourself and wire the circuit from the schematic. Then you can use the wiring diagram to check your work. And it's totally OK if you get it wrong, because really, the best way to learn is through making mistakes. And if you'd like more schematic challenges and examples, follow the Stamps in Class Mini Projects link on parallax.com education.